good morning, afternoon, or evening. Whatever time you are tuning into this broadcast, this is Ish, Issues, Coach Ish, whatever you want to call me. And uh, let's talk some boxing. Okay, so um, Anthony Joshua versus Otto Wallet. Another very interesting fight. Not just because of it builds towards the eventuality of Wilder versus Joshua. Um, Joshua has to win and win in convincing fashion. Um, I'm not sure about Joshua, man. I'm not sure about Joshua. Um, he's lost some things. He's not, he's, okay, even his interaction with Big Baby Miller, I didn't necessarily like it, you know? You're a fighter. You're in there talking to him like he, he's a fighter. He's stepping to you as a fighter. You're talking to him like he's a businessman. Well, you're talking to him like you're a businessman. You know, I'm your landlord and I'm not, you know, I'm, you're not on my level and all this other stuff. He's like, what do you mean he's not on your level? You're not on my level. You have losses. You have three losses. Big Baby Miller has zero losses. So that's just further proof that of what I've been saying about Joshua. Like he, he drinks his own Kool-Aid. He drinks his own Kool-Aid. And that's kind of been his undoing. This whole time, that's really been his undoing, that he drinks his own Kool-Aid. He's been drinking his own Kool-Aid since uh, Eddie Hearn and them been making it for him. And he still drinks his own Kool-Aid. He still believes, you know, he still believes that he's the Anthony Joshua of old. You not, bro. You got three losses. Big Baby Miller is undefeated. So what do you mean he's not on your level? How? What? Where? How? Y'all both heavyweights. He's undefeated. You got three losses. If you're scared, just say you're scared, man. And so I kind of get where Big Baby Miller's coming from. It's like, if you're scared, just say you're scared, man. All this uh, passive-aggressive tough talk is corny. So, I'm not sure about Joshua. Um, seen a lot of things in this build-up to this fight that I don't like. Um, he didn't work out in the open workout. That's just typical, you know, pampered, privileged Anthony Joshua stuff. You know, I remember he took that elder to Ruiz, and and he didn't, you know, and, you know, they, they interviewing Ruiz. He came over and hijacked the interview and left before they had a chance to interview him and, you know what I'm saying, made, you know, didn't come to the press conference and, you know, made, made the press come to him for the press conference. You lost. Why, why, why are you still throwing hissy fits and, 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 and trying to get, you know what I'm saying, special treatment? You lost. You can't even be humble in losing. He's a terrible loser. He lost to Usyk that second time. He had that meltdown and he threw the belt on the floor and grabbed his flag and had to punch him in his face. What are you doing? You want to throw my belt that I just fought tooth and nail for on the floor? I'd have decked him. Usyk is a good guy. I'd have decked him. I'm going to give you a meltdown. You know what I'm saying? So, I say that to say this. <coughs> <clears throat> Otto Wallen is a very capable opponent. Otto Wallen, for those who don't know, Otto Wallen is not a pushover. Um, Otto Wallen only has one loss, and that's to Tyson Fury. And honestly, that loss to Tyson Fury was questionable. It was questionable. It was questionable because... He really was supposed to have won that fight. He kind of got robbed. He kind of got robbed. 
They went above and beyond to let Fury finish that fight. They were supposed to stop that fight. He had two cuts over his eye. Two. He had two cuts. His eyelid was cut in two places above his eye. It was gross. And he was leaking all over the place. And they kept giving him a chance, giving him a chance. I think this was like in the 10th round. And then Tyson Fury for the next two rounds spent the entire time deliberately trying to knock Otto Wallet out. Because he was worried about it going to the cards. Because if it would have got if it would have got stopped from the from the cut, he would have lost because the cut was caused by a punch, not a headbutt. So, um, so they sh that fight should have got stopped. It should have got stopped, and Otto Wallen should have won via TKO, and then they should have ran it back or whatever. So I say that to say that Otto Wallen survived ten, no, twelve rounds with Tyson Fury. He went 12 rounds with Tyson Fury. He almost stopped Tyson Fury in that fight. And even with Tyson Fury being on a, as, at a at, for the last two rounds of that fight, was on a single-minded mission to knock Otto Wallet out, he couldn't. And he went the distance with him. Otto Wallen is a very good southpaw heavyweight. He's a very good southpaw. What I mean by that is that you have some you have some fighters who fight who are left-handed, but they don't do well fighting from the southpaw stance. Fighting from the southpaw stance is about footwork manipulation angles. It's about taking advantage of the fact that you're in a you're going to be in an open stance fight most of the time. So you're a right-handed fighter. Every once in a while, you'll run against a southpaw. So every once in a while, you'll be in a in an open stance if you're if you're a right-handed fighter. Most of the time, you're going to be in a closed stance. But if you're a southpaw fighter, most of the time you're going to be in an open stance. And an open stance fight really is about uh, lead foot dominance. That's what I call it, lead foot dominance. Otto Wallen is very good. At lead foot dominance. He's very good at it. Go watch him. He's very good at it. He's very good at it. He's very good at stepping off to his left and landing. I mean, stepping off to his right, landing left down the middle. He's very good at that. You know what I'm saying? Setting up his offense, going to his right, going over uh, the opponent's lead foot. So, Anthony Joshua is going to have to do something that he's not necessarily known for. He's going to have to outbox Otto Wallen. He's not necessarily known for outboxing people. He's going to have to outbox him. Uh, Otto Wallen got a chin. That's why I illustrated the story about Tyson Fury. I had to talk about Tyson Fury being in a position where now he got to knock Otto Wallen out. He couldn't. It's the same dude that turned around and knocked out Deontay Wilder twice. He couldn't knock out Otto Wilder, though. You know what I'm saying? That means one can make the argument that Otto Wilder is actually more durable than Deontay Wilder. Hmm. I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying one can make the argument. You know? Uh, Fury did the same thing to Otto Wilder that he did to Wilder. And he couldn't get him out of there. So, Otto Wallen is durable. Otto Wallen is a good tactician. Uh, he throws good combinations. He's a really good boxer. He stays switched on. Uh, he's not known for fading. Um, so, he's going to be a difficult task for Joshua. Uh, Joshua, he's lost a lot of his killer instinct. Um, he's a little bit more hesitant now. Uh, I think his mind state has changed. And um, he's more athletic than Wallen. Um, all things considered, 
all things considered, Joshua should win. Joshua should win. He should. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Joshua should win, all things considered. But I would not be surprised if he did it. I just put it like that. I wouldn't be surprised if he did it. I wouldn't be surprised if Otto Wallen pulled up, pulled out the upset. This is a very difficult fight for, for Joshua. I think, you know, Wilder and Parker. I don't think is, I don't think Wilder is going to have that much difficulty with Parker. I don't think uh, Big Baby is going to have that much difficulty with Dubois. But I do think Joshua is going to have difficulty with Wilder. Though. And I'm picking Joshua to win. But I'm saying that's a very shaky pick because Joshua's mental state is still, I still see things with him mentally that makes me question if he's still that killer. He's, you know what I mean? He don't seem to be that killer that he was back in the day when he was hungry. He was just running through people. He don't seem to be that same guy. Seems like them losses and getting beat and knocked out stopped or whatever you know what i'm saying it's kind of play with him his his mental so with all that considered man i'm still going to pick joshua to edge out a decision i'm gonna pick joshua to edge out a decision um and i'm gonna say that it might be controversial that it might be controversial and um or it may not but it's, it's, it'll be close. It'll be close. And I wouldn't be surprised if Otto Wilder got the win. I think it'll suck. Because that'll just push Wilder and Joshua further apart. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that will suck horribly. You know what I'm saying? Part of the reason why I'm picking Joshua because I want Joshua to win. I don't want nothing to mess up this Joshua Wilder situation we got brewing. But even if, if Joshua loses to Wilder... And Big Baby smashes uh, Dubois, then we can just forget about Joshua, and we can push for this Wilder versus Miller fight. That would be dope. And now that one can go either way. I think. I think uh, Wilder won't have Wilder will have a little difficulty knocking out Miller. Miller would give Wilder some problems. I think that would, that fight would be a that fight will actually be probably a more exciting fight than Wilder versus Joshua. I think I ain't gonna get my prediction on that fight yet. I'll wait. Let's see what happens with Joshua Wilder. But that's what I got going to the fight. Close decision. Joshua wouldn't be surprised if Wilder if Wilder pulled out the upset, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if Joshua's win was controversial. That's all I got. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Let's talk about it. All right.